You guys want to see a magic trick? <laughs> Watch this. How did I get over here? Oh boy, am I excited for this build. This is something I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. Basically what I'm going to be doing here is I'm building an ITX HTPC to keep in my basement as a VR rig. If I ever want to play VR, I have to take my giant 460X mid tower. It's not really that big, but there's a lot of hardware in it, so it's very heavy. Walk down two flights of stairs, put it on the floor in my basement, which I don't like to do. I don't want to keep it on the floor. Then I have to play VR. And then when I'm done, I have to take it all the way back up, do the same process in reverse, plug everything back in. It's a lot of work. So I came up with this idea to build a small ITX rig that I was gonna just leave downstairs. And whenever I wanna play VR, I don't have to carry a like 70 pound box down two flights of stairs when it's covered in glass. So I'm very excited that I'm finally able to do one of these. To start it all off, I'm gonna dismantle my shrine here. I have a Ryzen 7 2700X. It's an eight core, 16 thread CPU. Very overkill for just doing VR. The baseline for VR is a four core, four thread CPU, I wanna say. But Micro Center, oh, hold on, hold on. Micro Center, being the wonderful people they are, have amazing deals. Third gen Ryzen came out, very cool. However, it dropped the prices of second gen Ryzen. What else they do, Micro Center, is you can bundle it with the motherboard and save even more money. So, since this is a compatible motherboard with the 2700X, I saved another 20 bucks off of this board. This is the ASUS ROG Strix B450i Gaming. Now, I was considering going X470. It's a top of the line CPU. That makes sense. But what kind of features am I really missing out on? RAM speed? Maybe? This is just going to be doing VR. This is overkill for this anyway. So I don't really think it's gonna make it that big of an impact. So I decided to save the 50, 60, 70 dollars and just go with the B450 model. But speaking about RAM speed, because I know AMD is very RAM speed hungry, 16 gigs of Vengeance RGB Pro. Don't know off the top of my head if B450 can achieve 3200 megahertz. If it can't, I'll be sad. So I really like this memory because one, Corsair is a very reputable brand, and two, I have the standard Vengeance in my personal system. I love it, it performs very well. Just to backtrack a little bit, the cooler, the Wraith Prism. I really, really, really wanted to use this because it's a fantastic cooler, but this case, unfortunately, doesn't support that. It's too tall. So I had to backtrack a little bit. I had to pick up the Noctua NHL9i Pro Max. And what is Chromax, you might ask? Well, if you know Noctua, they're known for having flagship tier performance when it comes to their fans and their coolers. But they look bad. <sighs> sorry, Noctua, not sorry, but it's true. So their goal of Chromax was to make it all black because Noctua isn't a flashy RGB everything kind of company. So this is a very minimalist cooler. It's low profile, all black, Looks fantastic. Look, it even comes with its own thermal paste. Powering the whole system is this, the Corsair SF600. And I'm very happy to have gotten this power supply. Microsonar only had one left, and we actually had to basically play hide and seek trying to find it because it was hidden behind a couple other power supplies. And cool things about this power supply is that one, it's SFX. It's much smaller than your standard ATX power supply, and that's good because this case only supports SFX power supplies. Basically the size of my hand. I have very small hands. Think about Linus and how they make fun of him for being short. I'm the same height as Linus. There you go. But other than this being an SFX power supply, it's also 80 plus gold, 600 watts, fully modular. And I'm very excited that I get to, where did I even put it? Oh, it's over here. I get to bring this bad boy back out. Remember this thing? This is my GTX 1080 Extreme Edition. Now the whole idea of me getting this specific 1080 in the first place was that it has VR headers. It was very VR oriented. Now I wouldn't be getting a VR headset until two years later and then even shorter after that I ended up upgrading to a 1080 Ti. Thank you very much again Nvidia. So this has basically just been sitting around. It's been a set piece for me. You might have even seen it in a couple of videos. But basically this has just been sitting on my shelf collecting dust, really. And it's very unfortunate. 
Now for storage, I'm actually very excited to say I have two terabytes worth of NVMe M.2 storage. Originally, I was planning on just going with one terabyte NVMe SSD. I was going to especially make sure I wanted it to be M.2. 3200 megabyte per second read, 2900 megabyte per second writes. We have a very, very fast drive. There's a lot of firsts happening in this system. First, ITX build. For... Someone's like NASCAR racing outside. So many cool things happening in this build. This is like a monumental occasion for me. This is my first ITX system, my first HTPC, my first NVMe SSD build, my first personal AMD build. And because it's so special, I can't just leave this being all bland and boring and just plain black with no bling. So I remembered I had these. These are SP120 RGB fans from Corsair. These originally came with my 460X. Now, I replaced those fans with the LL series, so I just had these sitting around. And then last minute, when I'm buying the parts for this thing, I, th I even thought about it. I'm like, do I want to buy RGB fans? And I was thinking about something like the EK Varder RGB fans. If money was no object, maybe I would have gone with the double-sided LL fans. Eventually, I'm like, you know what? It comes with two fans, two 120 millimeter fans pre-installed. Anyway, I'll live with it. Thankfully, I remembered this. So now I get a little bit extra blink. The last part in this system, just 60 centimeter cable mod RGB strip. Tried and true, no flashy software. It's ASUS Aura compatible, so I can plug it straight into the motherboard, not have to worry about it. Basically destroyed my whole shrine here, but oh, one last thing, the case. Some of you have probably don't have a clue what this case is. It's not a recent case. This is the Lian Lee PC05SX. The big thing about this case is that it's an HTPC that is wall mountable. And that's a big thing I wanted for this build. I didn't want to have a computer sitting on a shelf or sitting on the floor that I could swing my controllers, smash into, possibly shatter glass, cut my hand, need hospital trips, while also damaging hundreds of dollars worth of hardware. So this being a narrow case, just wall mountable, it'll be out of sight, out of mind, look like a showpiece. With all that being said, I am very excited to start this build. So without further ado, let's get into it.
who would you look at this? Oh my god, I had so much fun doing this. This is probably one of the nicest looking builds I have ever done. Kind of even think it looks a little bit better than my personal rig and my, uh, my 460X. As you can see, I went for a kind of blue and pink cotton candy aesthetic. I was kind of going more for like a retro uh, like vaporwave kind of aesthetic with this build. I love, I love the lighting effects on the memory right here. I love the fact that I could vertical mount this graphics card. I'm actually super glad I threw this RGB strip in going all the way around the bottom. Like I said before I even started building, I was very glad that I remembered about these fans because look, they just give you just a little bit more accent lighting up top and the RGB strip just kind of completes it all. Overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. And like I said, this was, this was a first for me. First MITX build, first Ryzen build. And with that came its own challenges. For one, the entire case is basically aluminum. That's not a bad thing per se, but stuff like the LED strip wasn't able to securely mount to the case because it wasn't magnetized. So I had to throw a little bit of scotch tape in just to keep this bottom piece right here from sliding around because the whole thing's very loose. Like it's even almost falling out in the back over here. Another thing I had a little bit of an issue with was the whole idea of vertically mounting the graphics card. There are four PCI Express slots. This one being nearly a three slot card, I thought, oh good, I can put it as far back against the motherboard tray as I possibly can, while giving it just a little bit more space to space it out from the tempered glass side panel. But the issue was that the riser card, at least the part that I slotted into the graphics card, was angled a little bit too much, and it made it pretty difficult to start plugging stuff into the back of the graphics card, and it only got worse as you get closer and closer to the actual extender itself. So basically what I had to do is remove the third PCI Express cover, leave that one open, and then not screw in the graphics card with the provided thumb screws. And that allows me to kind of like bend the graphics card a little bit forward, if that makes sense. It doesn't sound good, but like there wasn't a whole lot else I could have done. Another thing I kind of had an issue with was plugging in the SFX power supply because the way this case works is the power supply is situated right here. So the power cable actually sits inside of the case and then it runs out through a cable grommet into the back portion of the case where all of your cables and stuff are. And then it comes out the side right over here. But there's a post and that's one of the posts that the tempered glass panel screws into. So in order to actually get this plugged in, I had to unscrew this post, hold the entire top frame, plug the power supply in, then I had to hold the screw in from the back with my screwdriver, try and thread the post on itself while balancing the weight of this entire fan array in this portion on my hand. And at this point I had already cable managed, I had plugged these two fans in. Another minor thing that kind of bothered me, like I mentioned, the whole case is basically aluminum, but it's also not even really built around a centralized frame. Like I can't, I haven't found a single rivet on this case. Everything's screwed in. Because everything's kind of screwed in, everything's very loose. Like. Even this front panel right here, like it's not screwed into anything down here. This whole bottom corner like bends and up here too, but it's not like the case isn't stable. Like there's no flex and stuff to it because everything's screwed into itself. The whole process of building in the case was a little bit kind of tedious, especially to keep going back and unscrewing panels. It ended up taking a lot more time than I was expecting. This is actually day two of me building this. I had finished this build around like two o'clock in the morning last night, but let's go over some positives before I end the video. The whole system booted fine first try. I'm so thankful for that. And I even made sure to leave the side panels and stuff off in the event that something were to go wrong because it's kind of bad luck to put all your panels on and close everything up. This is my first time working with an SFX power supply. It's so small. It's so tiny and cute. I pulled this thing out of the box. I'm like, look at how small this is. I'm like, oh my God, I love it. Like, look at this. It's the size of my, it's smaller than my hand. Like the whole thing. Like, ah! And thankfully this was a modular power supply because I screwed the whole power supply in with all the cables coming off of it. 
and I ended up having to unplug almost all of them. I'm also gonna say one thing about the Noctua cooler itself. For one, the Chromax version looks beautiful. I'm very happy I went with a black cooler with the black fan instead of some silver cooler with the brown and tan fan. However, when I was buying the cooler, I noticed a lot of people in the reviews were saying, because Noctua powder coated the cooler with the Intel mounting hardware still attached, it basically locked everything in place. A lot of people were saying it was near impossible to get the screws off. They were having to bust out like impact drills to get the hardware off. I didn't even use a lot of excessive force. If you don't realize, I'm not exactly a buff dude. I basically used nothing more than my iFixit screwdriver with this piece threaded through here and it turns it into a T-screwdriver. Gives you a little bit more torque. So I think that's basically gonna do it for the rest of the video, guys. I'm gonna wrap things up here real quick, but I got one little announcement going on. I just kinda wanted to thank you guys, personally, because as of recording this video, we're less than two weeks into 2020, and on New Year's, we hit 250 subscribers. That seems like a small number, especially compared to the really big guys, or even a couple people who have couple thousand subscribers. That's huge to me. And then this little number that I have right here, the amount of support that I see coming in the comment sections, especially when I upload videos, it honestly makes my day. I've seen several recurring commenters that I know watch the videos. And a couple of those guys are Tony Tech Bytes, you're the man. Kryshin95, is that how you say it? I don't really know. I've noticed you're a recurring commenter. Really appreciate your guys' support. Greyhound227, Tyler, my man. I consider you to be probably my first real fan. Because you commented a couple years ago, just saying, hey, I really, really like your content. You seem like a cool dude. Can we talk for a little bit? And I agree. I remember every little thing about that call, especially because you're on the other side of the country, several hours behind me. So I had to stay up until midnight on a school night talking to you. But you know what? I don't regret it at all. Don't regret how tired I felt the next morning because I had to go to school. Making things like this, <laughs> it's fun for me just to do, but I also love the whole video making process. Probably could have had this build done in like two hours if I didn't have to figure out how to work my new camera and the new light that I have, which is over here. One more thing, I have to thank my dad for helping me kind of buy the parts for this system. We're just kind of redecorating our basement and stuff. And he actually kind of came back to me with the idea of this because I had showed him a wall mountable computer case several years ago. Us kind of redoing our basement kind of brought that memory back. He's like, oh, hey, didn't you say that there was this wall mount computer case if you want? we can build a computer and keep it in the basement, mount it on the wall for your VR room. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. So we took the trip to the wonderful Haven Micro Center. We bought a good amount of the parts for this. And he honestly funded pretty much this entire system. So I'm just gonna say, thank you, dad. May or may not be watching. If you are, come give me a hug. Yeah, love ya. So anyways, this tangent's getting kind of long. So I'm gonna wrap it up here before this video becomes half an hour long like my micro center trips do. If you're new and you like what you saw, you know what to do. But if you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed below because I honestly love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one.